Hi guys, when I was in college, I was rooming with this uh, woman and another guy, uh, the three of us in a small, tiny apartment, studio apartment in New York City. Uh, I was a student and, you know, you always try to get the cheapest rent you can. I was always moving around trying to find cheaper rent. Um, anyway, there was a, there was a, we, we had a, we had a fight because someone broke the fan. She claims I did. Her boyfriend, who's also living with, said, I did, said, oh, I don't know. <laughs> so she said, it must've been you. It must've been you, Victor. I didn't break the fan, but, and I actually, and this was like at the end of my stay there. I was staying there for three months or something. And I left and she said, um, pay for the fan and it, it was like these days that fan would cost like 20 bucks for some reason the one she got it looked like same as the 20 buck fan cost 60 bucks anyway i'm like i'm not gonna pay for the fan because i didn't break it and the phone bill came and like my share was like about the same amount so i said uh um what was this what was this she said i don't remember what it was oh yeah she now she wanted me to pay for the phone bill too and she said and she stole my suit I had a really nice Armani suit that I got in uh, in Buenos Aires, Argentina, where I had lived a few months way way back in the day. And in those days, the dollar was really really strong, so the suit was uh, it was a handmade tailored Armani suit, but I got it for like two hundred bucks, right? And she said, "I told you, I saw. Look in your closet. Your suit's gone." I'm like, and I I went and checked all my clothes. Like, yeah, I didn't even notice. I'd moved out, and and my suit was gone, and she had taken it as kind of some weird collateral because she figured in the, in the, in the future, she was going to need something against me, which was really weird. Uh, and oh yeah. And then the phone bill came. And so she basically had me over a barrel. Right. And on top of it, she had sent this, um, this big, uh, boxer over to my house, <laughs> to my new apartment. I'd moved into uh, with, uh, with another friend and he was the sparring partner of Mike Tyson. And he called me actually. He's like, "I'm gonna kick your ass because you, you made you made my friend cry. And anyone who makes my friend cry, you know, they're gonna suffer." And I was like, I was honestly scared. I went to the cops, and they're like, uh, "I said, what should I do?" And they're, and they're like, uh, "Just carry a baseball bat around." And I said, "What? You can't do that." And he goes, "No. If anybody stops, any cop stops you, just tell them you're going to a baseball game, right?" So I said, okay. <laughs> that was his. That was his solution. But I was I was pretty terrified. Um, Tyson was at the height, and this is the Mike, Mike Tyson sparring partner, and I'm a, and I'm and I'm like, twenty years old. Anyway, so I was reading a lot of um, uh, uh, not Korean, uh, Asian philosophy at the time, and I came across something I thought was very interesting. I think it was in the in the, in the Sun Sun Tzu maybe, but anyway, when you are attacked by someone who thinks they have something valuable, give it to them. And that takes away their power, right? So it's a little bit like shoot the hostage kind of situation. Uh, the hostage is only valuable because they think it values to you. And really, and this is, has nothing to do with the Japanese hostage who was just killed, which I think is horrible. And uh, I'm just really sad. Those kind of beheading. I don't, I don't want to get into that, but that's a whole, whole different. Uh, that's just horrible beheading people. Oh. But anyway, let me explain why, why, what the point of this video is. I made a video about the whole unrested uh um, um, quick rhino drama and it's um it's a you know it's a train of thought blah 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 video i go on and on and i made it but i wasn't happy with it and four minutes into the video i get a phone call from my wife saying you know she she had cleared it with the hospital that i can come and stay with her because she's really she's she's suffering from you know your, your normal baby blues that you get He's like, can you come spend the night with me, right? And there's nowhere to sleep at the hospital. It just, I'm just going to sit in a chair and like do this, you know, for the next eight hours or so. And I had to work early the next morning. So I thought, okay, I, you know, sometimes I, I, I can get by on four hours of sleep and I can get by sitting in a chair. <laughs> so I'll go. But we had to wait until the, ne the nurses shifted. There's a shift coming up. And one of the nurses, that's her, kind of her buddy, she's like, okay, he can come, but you can't tell anybody. <laughs> And don't sign him in and stuff. So wait until, wait, I got to wait for 30 minutes, right? So I'm like, she says, I said, okay, I'm coming. And then she says on the phone, but you can't hear. She says, okay. Uh, I don't know if she says on the phone, but anyway, I knew that I had to wait to, co to go. But if you watch the video that's out there, it looks like I'm just going rambling on on my video and not paying attention to that phone call. You know, I'm not, I, mean, I said I'm going to go, but I didn't go. I just stayed in the video. So, uh, of course, it could be taken out of context or it could be seen as me being a, you know, a heartless father to your wife who just had a baby 
But that really isn't why I didn't release the video. Uh, I didn't release the video because I, I'm not really comfortable with everything I said in the video at all, and I'm really not sure how to deal, or, or even if I have to comment on this whole unrested uh, quick rhino drama. Uh, there are quite a few things I have to say about it, and I think we can, we can use this uh, as, as we can any humor, human interaction as a learning experience. But, um, and I feel, I feel bad for, for both people actually involved in this. I think both people are being needlessly attacked by many people. And I just wanted to, you know, kind of calm everybody down and show a little bit why this and that, I think this and that. And, and you know, um, in my own um, tough love kind of way, to, to give my, anyway, I gave, I made a long ass video and I didn't put it up for the general public, okay? But I did link it uh, to Patreon because uh, a lot of people that I know there can see those videos and they give me good feedback about my video. I did link it to Patreon, so anybody who, who paid, who had who has been supporting me, could see it, right? But it was mostly the easiest way for me to get it out to certain people who I know have access to that. And I and I and I then at the at the the next day, the next day as I was going to work, so I had to work early the next day. I I emailed them and I told them about it so they can go go to check their Patreon, and see the video. But it was not meant for general consumption because you know didn't want to really aggravate everything. And I'm, and and most. Most importantly, I'm not happy with that video, right? So that's it. So one um, guy named Sampai Lover has taken it upon himself to um, re-upload that video. He stole the video. I don't, you know, someone if you um, if you thumb thumb up a video, it'll appear in somebody's feed. So he found that video. He decided to thumb it up. He decided to steal it and repost it. And um, he wrote all this crap about it. How, uh, you know, criticizing me, blah blah. blah. So he thinks this is really really um, valuable, and he's, he's got one up on me. But to be honest, I think if Sampai Lover is really a supporter of Quick Rhino, which he seems to be, you're basically hurting him by putting up that video. Because that video is going to bring nothing but, I think, you know, I say a lot of shit, you know, in that video that a lot of people are going to agree with. And just making it worse. So why bother, you know? And it's really not, like I'm saying in this video, it's not really what I want to, uh, want to say. It's not really represents my opinion. And now that this video is out, you know, if you guys do happen to see that video, then you'll know, you know, uh, the, the backstory on that. You'll know I don't stand behind that video. And um, that's about it. Uh, yeah, but it's, uh, I just wanted to clarify that. And uh, I'm going to go now. Thanks for watching. I will, I will be making videos in the future about things that I, I, that I want to comment on. Some people, th I've got one person who says, you know, I shouldn't comment on it. I shouldn't make videos commenting on things. Uh, but they're making comments commenting on things. And I think if you have a right to make a comment, then I have a right to make a comment too. And if, that, if I choose video form, I choose video form. You have, you out there watching these videos, making comments, you have every right to, to make a video yourself. Uh, even if it's uh, disagreeing with what I say. And I welcome those uh, videos. Uh, and I love, and I do, uh, contrary to, to some people's opinions, I, I welcome being proven wrong or having my mind changed. And that's, uh, that's one of the reasons I was originally called Flaky, and that's why we, have, we call this channel Give Me a Flake Man, because someone, I changed, I changed my mind on something a long, long time ago on an opinion. I changed my mind on an opinion I had online, and someone said, and someone who liked my original opinion called me a flake for changing my opinion or flip-flopping, so to speak, I, I guess. So yeah, I will occasionally change my opinion, and and and, and uh, even with myself, I you know I, I struggle. Even in if you if you do guys if you if you guys do find that video, you'll see that I'm not you know I'm saying this and that and this and that you know. So so anyway, that's it. This is way too long. And yeah, keep that in mind. Any time you are attacked in the future, if someone think attacks you with. Some, by using something they think is valuable to them, you can, in a way, win by losing. Win by losing. Give them what they think is most valuable to you and walk away. And the fight's over, you know. But it's a tough, it's a tough move, you know. I gave up that Armani suit. Oh, um, <laughs> I never told you what happened. So I told her, she said, she said, I'm gonna keep the suit. And it really bugged the hell out of me, but I thought about it, and then she, I said, you know what? Called her back, I said, I don't remember. I don't remember the whole. This is 25 years ago. So I called her back. I said, "You know what? Keep the suit. I hope it fits you." And she called back and she said, "Okay, 
I'll give you the suit back if you pay the phone bill, which was my bill to pay. I said, okay, that's fine. So we met in a public place where there was a, we met in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a building that had a doorman and guards so I could get my ass kicked. And she gave me back the suit. So in the, in, in the end, I didn't pay for the fan that I didn't break, which was, which was right. So that's my story. Thanks for watching and win by losing. See, see you guys later. Thank you.